Look, I am by no means highly successful in any way whatsoever, so I hate being preachy. But someone emailed me the other day asking me how they could make DJing and production their full-time career. Now, I'm not a DJ, but I am a producer and an engineer, and I'm lucky enough to do this every single day of my life. So I thought I would share with you some quick points on what I wish I had known back then. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Fabio here from Noise, back in the most reverby room on planet Earth. You wanna be in music full time. You wanna be a recording engineer. You wanna be a producer. Maybe you wanna be a DJ. And all of those things seem rather glamorous because we see people at the top, but we don't see the journey there. Now I'm not at the top and I'm not at the bottom, but I'm kind of somewhere in the middle doing this. And it hasn't been easy getting here, but there were definitely a few things that I learned along the way, which I hope by sharing with you might help. Okay, so number one, passions are powerful, but having too romantic an idea of doing what you love every day, full time and getting paid for it is a tricky one. So you wanna make sure that you have a really good job that pays you the maximum amount for the least amount of effort so you can invest in yourself. Investing in yourself is difficult because you need to figure out exactly what it is that you need. Maybe it's equipment, maybe it's some graphics for your Instagram, or maybe you need to buy yourself a ticket to a festival coming up in the summer to inspire yourself and potentially meet people who are like-minded. All of those things should be considered an investment in yourself. My second point is I honestly think there should be about a 30-70 split between what you know music and your network. So I'm talking about what you know production-wise, what you know about music as a whole. If you make EDM, let's say Progressive House, it's really important to know about dance music, its history, where things came from, paying respect to its roots. Because when you meet people who are like-minded or who've been working for a lot longer in the industry, they'll respect you for you having that knowledge. The other 30% should be your network. You can be the best producer in the world in your bedroom, but if no one hears your music or you've got no one to get feedback from or who might pass it on to a label, maybe they're a promoter at a club or it's another engineer who masters it and you do the mixing. Grow that network as much as you can. It will happen organically if you put work in, but just be aware of it. Okay, the next point is the internet is your best friend and your worst enemy. What I mean by that is just because someone does something one way doesn't mean it's right. What you should do is take that tip, read it, learn it, review it, practice it, put it into your work and then say, yeah, you know what? I like using this. It helped me with this or actually I don't agree with that and that's fine. You don't have to agree with everything everyone teaches you just because they made a YouTube video on it. The next one is probably one of my favorites. Life is more than just about music. Music is great, but it's very goddamn consuming. And you'll be surprised that the friendships or relationships that you have with people in the industry are probably not gonna be based around music. Yes, you're there because you both play keyboards or, you know, use logic. But those real organic relationships are based on the fact that, oh, maybe you like cooking or photography or basketball, whatever it may be. You'll be surprised that those are the things that you bond over rather than check out the sick beat I made. This one's a tough one to hear for anyone. And I think if I had heard this however many years ago, I would be like, yeah, 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 sure. but. Don't be disheartened if things don't go to plan, even after five years, which seems like a really long time, but it isn't. Look for the small wins and the big opportunities. Be patient and self-compassionate. You will face a lot of obstacles. Really, there is no plan per se. You've got to put in the time, and this is so cheesy and cliche, but when opportun opportunity is when hard work meets luck, and you need both those parts of the equation to make the sum. Without hard work, becoming talented at what you do, you might be in a situation where you'll meet the Warner Brothers executive A&R or owner or something like that. But if you haven't got anything to show him or her, then you're not completing that equation. And just don't be too critical. If you don't feel like you're making any progression after three years, but you've been putting in the time, you probably are making a lot of progression. You're just not aware of it yet. Have a listen to your stuff from your first year and you'll understand what I mean. Last one is my favorite. By the way, I wrote these in an email, which is why I keep going back and forth because someone asked me for these tips. Be humble and be confident. Be fucking humble because someone out there is doing a lot more than you with a lot less, doing a lot better than you. 
with a lot less. My favorite story in music production is about Flume, great producer, had a pair of headphones and a laptop, mixed and mastered everything himself, was working at McDonald's at the time, and his music is incredible. Incredible. Look at Muramasa, look at Billie Eilish and her brother. And I know you're thinking, oh, well, they had $3,000. They had $3,000 and won seven Grammys, people. Most Grammy winners are in 100,000 pound studios with 15,000 dollar mics with a, a team of assistants ready at their call for anything that they need. These two did it in their bedroom. That is goddamn inspiring. So if you only have a computer, headphones, and a pair of speakers, and you think that that's not enough, it is, it really, really is. Yes, I sound like a hypocrite because I've got a big studio with loads of fancy gear. You have to understand I'm an engineer. I've been doing this for a long, long time. And those pieces of equipment, which are accurate, help me make decisions quicker. However, since being here in Canada, all I have is these and a set of Beats pills and a car, which I can check in, but I'm still doing great mixes. I'm still doing great masters and clients are still happy because I know how to adapt to those pieces of kicks. I've been using them for a long, 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 long time. And if you keep changing your headphones and changing your speakers and changing your room, you're never going to adjust anything. You're never gonna learn. It's using a different synth every session. You're downloading new plugins all the time. If you have limitations, that's a good thing and it will force you to be more creative. So be humble, but be confident because a lot of people will tell you you can't do it and you need to believe in yourself. Just don't believe in yourself too much. Okay guys, hope you found that useful. As I said, that came from an email that someone sent me and then I wrote them some points. They asked how they could take their passion to being a full-time prospect. And although it's very difficult to tailor points to an individual, these are some fairly broad ideas as to how you can further your career, whether you're at the beginning or maybe you're, <laughs> maybe you're kind of in the middle like I am here. So. I hope you found that useful. As always, before you go, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you very soon. It's a big love from Noise. Peace.